Hi, book summary lovers. Today we are going to talk about The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, a detailed summary, and analysis. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas is a fictional story about two unlikely friends, a Nazi commandant's son and a Jewish concentration camp inmate. The story, written by John Boyne and published by David Fickling Books in 2006, was made into a major motion picture in 2008. The beauty of a child's innocence in a time of war, the common desire we all have for friendship, and the fences, both literal and figurative, that we must all navigate and choose whether or not to break down are all explored in The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. The story is told through the eyes of Bruno, a nine-year-old boy who is the son of a Nazi commandant. Bruno returns home from school to find the families made packing their belongings. Unbeknownst to Bruno, his father has been chosen to oversee operations at Auschwitz, and the family will be accompanying him. Bruno is heartbroken at the prospect of leaving his home, friends, and grandparents in Berlin. When the family arrives at their new home, which is stark and isolated, the situation worsens. Bruno's parents instruct him that certain areas are out of bounds at all times and no exceptions. This includes the sprawling property behind the house, which appears to be beckoning Bruno. Bruno laments the lack of children his age and fun activities in Outwith, despite having no idea what is going on just behind his house. Gretel, Bruno's 12-year-old sister, is an all-too-eager believer in Nazi rhetoric aimed at German youth. When the family relocates to Auschwitz, she develops a crush on a Nazi soldier, Lieutenant Kotler, who is a frequent visitor to the family's home. Bruno dislikes Kotler, who treats him patronizingly. Gretel is also a student of Herr List, the homeschooling tutor hired by the children's father. Bruno is skeptical of him because he openly promotes Nazi propaganda and antisemitism. Bruno can see hundreds, if not thousands, of people in pajamas working on what he believes is a farm from his bedroom window. When Bruno's curiosity gets the better of him, he embarks on an adventure that leads him to an infinitely long fence. Bruno follows the fence and, after a while, notices a boy sitting by the fence. Bruno approaches him, noticing that he is dressed in the same pajamas as everyone else on that side of the fence, as well as a striped cloth cap. Bruno takes notice of the boy's filthy, bare feet. Bruno is taken with the boy's sad eyes and pale skin. Shmuel, the boy, introduces himself, and the two begin talking. They quickly discover they have the same birthday, April 15, 1934. Bruno realizes how lonely he has felt since his family relocated to Outwith. He misses his schoolmates Martin, Carl, and Daniel. Shmuel informs Bruno that there are many boys his age on his side of the fence, which Bruno immediately considers unfair, he intends to speak with his father about his desire to play with the boys on the other side of the fence. Bruno says he's from Berlin, and Shmuel says he's from Poland, neither has ever heard of the other's hometown. Bruno suggests that Germany is superior to Poland because the Germans are superior, recalling his geography lessons with his tutor, Herr List. Bruno finally works up the courage to ask Schmuel why there are so many people on his side of the fence and what they are doing there. Bruno continues to pay Schmuel visits, frequently bringing him food. Bruno suggests that he climb under the fence every day so that he can play with Schmuel. Schmuel warns Bruno that it would be a bad idea. Schmuel appears in Bruno's home one day as a servant with fingers small enough to clear some crystal glasses. He begs Bruno for food, which he gives him, but when Lieutenant Kotler notices him eating, he accuses him of stealing it. Bruno does not defend him, and Schmuel is brutally beaten. When the Führer, Adolf Hitler, and his girlfriend, Eva Braun, arrive at dinner, Bruno has no idea who they are except that the man is his father's boss, and he takes an instant dislike to them. This scene demonstrates how children are excellent character judges. Bruno's mother is tasked with supporting her husband while shielding her children from what he does. When she discovers that prisoners are being executed at his command, she demands that she return to Berlin with the children because Auschwitz is clearly not a good place for them to grow up. Ironically, while Bruno once desired to return to Berlin, he is now hesitant to leave due to his friendship with Schmuel. 
Bruno feels terrible about having to tell Shmuel that he is leaving, so he tries to make amends by promising to assist Shmuel in finding his missing father. The two devise a scheme with far-reaching consequences that they could never have predicted. Bruno returns the next day with a shovel, and Shmuel meets him at the fence with an extra set of pajamas. Bruno digs a large enough hole to shimmy under the fence in the hopes of finding Shmuel's father. Initially, the two friends are overjoyed that they are finally on the same side of the fence, and each boy resists the urge to hug the other. Bruno overviews the scene on the other side of the fence, emaciated, shaven-headed figures looking sad, soldiers shooting prisoners, and a distinct lack of the fruit and vegetable stands and cafes he had anticipated. I don't think I like it here, Bruno says to Shmuel, to which Shmuel responds, neither do I. Bruno decides to go home, but it is too late. The boys are herded into a line with hundreds of other prisoners, taken to a room, forced to undress, and gassed to death. Shmuel and Bruno hold hands throughout the ordeal, clinging to one another and their friendship until the bitter end. Bruno's family looks for him for several days until a Nazi soldier discovers a pile of his clothes near the fence hole. Bruno's mother eventually returns to Berlin with Gretel, and Bruno's father vanishes with a group of fellow soldiers. Of course, all of this happened a long time ago, and nothing like that could ever happen again, the story concludes. In this day and age, no. This is clearly a loaded statement intended to make readers reflect on all of the instances of persecution since the Holocaust. Readers are left to consider how a small act of kindness, or hatred, can affect others. Thank you for listening to our book summary of The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. In the description of the video, you can find the biography of the author and a short book blurb. If you like our book summaries please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Bye and see you next time.